objectives of this chapter are define acute respiratory failure, differentiate between type 1 and type 2 failure, that would be hypoxemic and hypercapnic failure, discuss the cause of acute respiratory failure, contrast chronic respiratory failure and acute on chronic respiratory failure, identify the complications of respiratory failure, discuss the indications for ventilatory support, describe the general management principles of hypoxemic and hypercapnic respiratory failure, discuss the indications for non-invasive ventilation. The de definition of respiratory failure is the inability to maintain oxygen delivery to the tissues or adequate removal of carbon dioxide from the body. So that what that criteria is, the PaO2 less than 60 and or the PCO2 greater than 50 while the pH is decreasing. And this is in individuals on room air at sea level. And this criteria includes a 36% hospital mortality rate. Causes of hypoxemia. Um, here's a list. We're going to go talk about these individually, but VQ mismatch, which is the most common, and which, which that's nice because it's easily fixed, usually. Shunt, alveolar hyp hypoventilation, diffusion impairment, perfusion diffusion impairment, decreased inspired oxygen, and venous admixture. So the normal physiology, uh, talking about the different zones in the lungs, the high ventilation perfusion ratio at the apices of the lung. And, and so as you read this the VQ ratio, and technically those are supposed to have the dots over them, uh, the V is ventilation and Q is perfusion or blood flow. And that is the highest at the apices of the lungs. In other words, you have high ventilation there and low perfusion, so that number would be the highest. The lowest, the ventilation at the base of the lungs. As disease worsen, the VQ mismatch impairing ventilation while perfusion remains adequate. The obstructive lung disease like asthma or COPD, also infection, heart failure, inhalation injury, uh, anything that would include partially collapsed or fluid filled alveoli. So a graphic depiction here is out of your book, okay, where we have on the on the left hand side we have a PiO2 of 150, Pi meaning that's the pressure of inhaled oxygen of 150, okay, and so you notice that the uh, with VQ uh, with part of the left side having a low VQ mismatch or low VQ uh, ratio where the P, the alveolar pressure is 50 on the left side and the alveolar pressure on the normal side is 100. Well when you average those two together what comes out here is you have an arterial tension of 64 and arterial content of 18.5. On the other side, however, the big change here, there's a couple of big changes. One is that the inhaled pressure is 285 now, the PiO2 285, but there's no ventilation on one side. So um, even though you get a, a, an alveolar tension of 225, okay, when you mix these two together, because the ventil if there's no ventilation, there's no, no, there's no gas exchange in that area. Um, the, the arterial tension then becomes 57, okay, and the arterial content is 17.75. So back between the two then, just because you increase the PiO2 from 150 to 285, in this uh, representation, the 285 actually gets less blood, I mean less oxygen into the blood than the PiO2 of 150. How does this patient look? Well, the diagnostic stuff for us, uh, the patient has a low PaO2 and a low saturation. 
what the patient looks like, uh, the very nonspecific dyspnea, tachycardia, and tachypnea, uh, the, the, the typical symptoms of any respiratory problem usually. Accessory muscle use, nasal flaring, pedal edema, if uh, respiratory failure is cardiac in origin. Cyanosis, peripheral or central. Confusion to coma if, CNS then, uh, if the CNS is involved. Auscultating this patient you might have a number of different breath sounds. You might have bilateral wheezing, uh, which obviously is a result of bronchospasm. Could be fluids, could be upper airway disease, could be inflammation, could be secretions, number of things. Uh, diminished bilaterally, a very common finding in emphysema. Uh, unilateral abnormalities um, may, unilateral meaning on one side only, uh, may indicate that a single lung has a lesion. The absence of breath sounds may be collapse or infusion. Unilateral crackles, alveolar, the alveolar filling process. Unilateral crackles, alveolar filling process is of concern. The x-ray for the respiratory failure patient many times is, is extra dark or extra light. And that's what this represent, represents, black or white. Um, any, anytime it's darker, you have more air that's being trapped into the lungs. So uh, that's a characteristic of obstructive lung disease. White x-ray meaning the density is increasing or increased. It may, that may be fluid, tissue, or bone. And so in respiratory failure, it, that's probably going to represent fluid or a thickening AC membrane. A shunt. Normal anatomic shunt is about 2 to 3 percent of the cardiac output. A pulmonary shunt occurs when no ventilation to match perfusion. And this is always caused by disease and will lead to hypoxemia as the alveoli collapse or are filled with fluid, uh, such as in atelectasis or pulmonary edema or pneumonia. The major difference between the two in the VQ mismatch and the shunt is that the VQ mismatch responds pretty easily to oxygen therapy, where the shunt does not or is considered refractory. So this is a representation of the shunt. Okay, and again, on the left-hand side, or, or version A here, uh, where your PIO2, PIO2 is 150. Now, I think the values are the same as the previous drawing. But the PIO2 is 150. Uh, once you add the, the no ventilation in, and the, the average comes out to the arterial tension being 54, and the arterial content being uh, 17.5. Version B here on the right-hand side, where the PIO2 is 8, 285, very little difference than from the previous side, where the PAO2 is 57 and the CAO2 is 17.75. So you see, uh, adding extra oxygen here does not influence the outcome. Doesn't change, makes very little difference in how much oxygen gets to the blood. So that's when, when you think it's a shunt, okay? And so uh, anytime you have a shunt, then extra oxygen doesn't help. You have to add pressure. So the clinical presentation is very similar to that of the patient. Again, those are very nonspecific signs about tachycardia and tachypnea. Um, however, in this instance, the x-ray is usually white. Um, and ARDS is a classic example. An advanced case of of ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome, the classic case is what we call white out of the x-ray where you don't see any any dark areas and it looks like it's just completely white. It's full of stuff. Okay. Um, on the other hand, the VQ, VQ mismatch represents a black x-ray. So that's one way to tell the difference. So differentiated from VQ mismatch by lack of response in PaO2 as FiO2 is increased. So that's what the shunt is. So the causes of hypoxemia, you know, regardless of what causes it, how do you treat it? Right? Do you give oxygen or do you add pressure? Which one is it? Okay, well, at the at the NBRC, the uh, 
the rule is is the above 60 percent FiO2 you add pressure okay and that's in in the means of CPAP or PEEP all right and so uh, giving oxygen if you give oxygen and it responds then you think it's a VQ mismatch and then if you get all the way up to 60 percent and start having to start add pressure uh, to resolve the hypoxemia then you consider that it's um, it's probably uh, shunt okay and here's some, just some basic description of VQ mismatch versus shunt uh, the dead I'm sorry the dead space versus shunting dead space is where the ventilation is good and the perfusion is bad for shunting the ventilation is bad and the perfusion is good diffusion impairment uh, this is most pronounced um, on exertion you know when you get get out of the bed or get off of the couch and you want to go do something like if you want to go take the trash out or uh, make the coffee or or dinner or you know go mow the yard whatever that's when you get shorter breath okay and this impairment can be caused by th or, or scarring okay of, of the AC membrane like in fibrosis or asbestosis okay uh, for the obstructive process here the elevator destruction caused by emphysema can also lead to this pulmonary vascular abnormalities can also influence this in the form of anemia pulmonary emboli or hypertension that would be pulmonary hypertension clinical presentation here um, for these restrictive diseases like this that have that very thick AC membrane a dry cough and fine basal crackles is common like in pulmonary fibrosis you may also have jugular distension and edema in pulmonary hypertension decreased inspired oxygen or de decreased PiO2 whatever whichever one you want to call it there um, this is clinically uncommon because this is not something that we're going to see in the hospital but if you have to transport a patient uh, high altitude could be a problem or even you know if, if your victim was was a mountain climber and they were you know they brought them in off the mountain not a big problem here in West Texas um, but if you go elsewhere it might be okay in addition if you transport a patient or if your patient plans on traveling okay the airliners uh, do not they pressurize their cabin but they don't pressurize it to a, a complete atmosphere it's in the neighborhood of about 0.75 or 0.8 atmospheres travelers with pulmonary disease may require supplemental oxygen and more supplemental oxygen than normal okay because they're going to be at altitude even inside the airliner okay and this is usually not a problem you just have to make arrangements with the airline beforehand and so signs signs and symptoms of this of this uh, you treat this with oxygen okay and I, and I just had a um, experience with like this a few years ago and we went to Colorado and we went up to Pike Peaks on their on their cog railway and um, you know Colorado Springs itself is about 6600 feet and I think they took us up to about 9,000 feet this cog railway and one of the ladies that set up a few rows ahead of us once we got up there um, she just fell out of her seat unconscious conk she conked over and of course the uh, the emergency personnel just came and, and put an oxygen mask on her and woke her right up and uh, she, she was okay after that but that that would be the extreme of the hypoxemia venous ag mixture this is a decreased mixed oxygen mixed venous oxygen um, basically what's going on here is as uh, you have a low cardiac output and your metabolism stays the same what happens what winds up happening is you extract more oxygen out of the blood and so by the time the blood gets back around to the heart or I'm sorry to the lungs then there's less oxygen in it than normal and so now the lungs have to work harder to refill replace that oxygen that is extracted okay and so um, in the decreased cardiac output tissues extract more oxygen okay and this is uh, clinic presents with signs and symptoms of CHF and or, and or underlying pulmonary disease so differentiating between the causes of hypoxemic respiratory failure 
Okay, we're going to focus on three of these. We're going to look at hypoventilation, uh, VQ mismatch, and shunt. Okay, now we, we pretty much discussed the VQ mismatch and the shunt in detail, but I want to focus here a minute on hypoventilation. How do we recognize hypoventilation? Well, diagnostically we draw blood gas and we look at the CO2. Okay, and if the CO2 is high um, and, and the pH is low, then we have hypoventilation. Now, in addition, you're also going to have a normal A to A gradient in, in this setting. Even though your PO2 might be low, it's related to the hypoventilation, not to the, the diffusion that's occurring across the AC membrane. So that's, that's the way that you you would, uh, another process of looking at hypoventilation is its hypoxemia in the presence of a normal A to A gradient. So I'm going to give you an example here of how to calculate the A to A gradient. Um, so I'll, I'll just insert some text boxes here and maybe you can follow along. Remember, the hypoxemia is related to the hypoventilation, not a diffusion problem.